Well, hey, garden friends. Can you believe it? It is February 21st, 2024. And I think the last video I posted was in uh, the mid part of September when I was actually on my way to Oklahoma to say goodbye to my father who passed September 30th of last year. So that was the last video I did. And then I just kind of had to take a hiatus uh, to kind of heal and recuperate from losing my father who was my greatest garden um, fan. He watched all my videos. And so it's hard, it's kind of hard to jump back on here and uh, get back into it. But I am really excited to be back in the garden season. And we'll just dedicate this first video to my dad. Um, Today is the first day that we're planting seeds and we're doing a new system this year that I'm super excited about, which is soil blocking. So I've heard about this for a really long time. I know a lot of people are doing it and I just haven't jumped in till this year when a friend actually bought me a soil blocker. And I thought, you know what? I think I'm gonna look more into this. And a huge reason for that was because I'm just tired of storing up all these cell trays and um, seed starting cells in my garage. They're just taking over my shelving space and um, this is a really space conservative way. And it's really to, a space conservative way to start your seeds. It's also really great for your plants. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how we're starting our onions and our celery and maybe some echinacea using this little three quarter inch soil blocker from Ladbrook, which is a family company in uh, Europe. So let's get going with soil blocking. Okay, so here are the supplies that I'm using other than the soil blocking mix that I just put together is my um, Ladbrook soil blocker, Ladbrook. This is a family company out of England actually um, who did their, started their whole business um, using soil blockers. So if you find a Ladbrook soil blocker, which you can find on um, the gardener's workshop I got one of mine there. You can also find it on Bootstrap Farmer. It's another great, has a lot of great soil blocking equipment and starter kits. Uh, that or the Gardener's Workshop. Both of those I recommend. I'm sure there's other places. This is the three quarter inch, three quarter inch soil blocker. So I've got 20 little plugs in there that are gonna go onto my little styrofoam tray. So this is, these are literally, um, cafeteria trays that you can buy on Amazon. Uh, they have all different sizes. This one is, I think, 10 by seven-ish, uh, but I can get one, two, almost three of these on one tray, which is pretty awesome. So that means I can get 60 plugs on one tray. So my point in doing this, I actually have larger soil blocking trays that I got from Bootstrap Farmer. They have a mesh top and then a shallow bottom with no holes and the point of this is when you're doing your soil blocking onto these trays that when you water them you can literally pick this up it's not flimsy it's very sturdy and you can dump out the extra water into a bucket so that's the idea behind these mesh trays and if you use these smaller trays you can just kind of tilt and drain the water off. So I'm kind of playing around with two different systems. The great thing about using these smaller trays is that if you're only doing certain varieties, like smaller amounts of certain varieties, you can keep them separate on these different trays. So I can do one variety of onions on this tray. So we'll do, let's say our Elisa Craig onions on here. I'll do my Southport white globe tray or globe onions on here. And then I'll do my ruby red onions on here. And that way I can keep these separate, uh, especially with the soil blocking. I won't have to worry about switching around all my plugs and getting them mixed up like I have in the past. I can write directly on the edge of the tray or I can use my little plant markers and mark uh, the little soil block. Although I find sometimes, especially with the smaller soil blocks, that's harder to do. So I'll probably just mark the actual tray. But this is a great way to separate out your varieties. When you start doing a lot of plants, especially if you're using the larger two inch soil blocker, which I'll use for my larger seeds, that's where these larger trays will really come in handy because you're gonna be using like this space here for one plug. It's also great for transplants. So when these guys get big enough to move into a larger soil block, which I'll do for some of my plants, 
um, I'll have this larger tray and I have color coded. I've got blues and pinks and purples and yellows and greens. And that'll be another way to, to kind of keep my varieties or my plant family separated on my plant shelf just to keep things organized. Because when you have so many plants going and even when you only have a few, sometimes you get them confused. So having color coded systems or this type of system is great for separating out. So let's get into the actual soil blocking now and we'll get them onto our smaller trays today. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, today is February 21st, the day after my birthday. Uh, we're in Southwest Michigan, Berry County. So that kind of gives you an idea of our climate, uh, zone five, B6A, I believe is what we are. So the things that I'm starting today are my very long season plants. So celery, which can be 100 to 120 days till harvest, and my bulb onions, which are anywhere from 90 to 120 days. So my goal is to start these now and then succession plant them every week because I want to be able to have onions ready every week of the season uh, for our CSA farm share members and for our family. So we're gonna do our first set today and I'm only doing a small tray of each. And then next week I'll do another small tray and another small tray and eventually I'll have them all on one large tray. So I've got ruby red onion. That's what we're gonna start with right now. And I'll show you how to actually get the soil block onto the tray. But as you can see, I've got them separated out here so I know what is going on to what. I'm also doing my Utah celery today, starting a batch of that, which I will also succession plant, and then starting some Echinacea purpia uh, seeds. And I will only do one tray of the Echinacea coneflower seeds. Here we are making our homemade seed starting mix. We've got 16 cups of peat moss or cocoa coir, four cups of compost, and a fourth cup of either green sand or this uh, nutrient blocking mix I use from the gardener's workshop. And because the compost and even some of the peat moss had clumps in it, we are sifting it to make sure that we get a really fine really fine soil here that this is what will be our actually our blocking mix this year we're doing uh, blocking instead of using um, cups and well I just blanked on the term uh, I've always used solo cups and reusable um, potting squares for my seeds but this year I'm starting I'm gonna try something different with a blocking mix so my daughter is here helping me sift and I'm waiting on some water to boil to sterilize what I'm going to use today and starting the first seeds of the season. So she's using a cup here to kind of mash down and make sure that all that's left here on top are wood chips. There were not any soil left, soil, soil clumps in here that we can still sift and get in there. That looks pretty good. And then all these wood chips will go to the garden to break down um, as we wait for the gardening season. So we're definitely not throwing these out. We're not even putting these in the compost. They're gonna go straight to the garden. Okay, so we've got most of our seed starting mix or our soil blocking mix really is what I should call it sifted. Uh, there's still more to sift, but I don't need all of this today. This is actually going to be my stock for at least part of the season. We'll see how long this goes. This is about 41 cups of soil, dry soil blocking mix. So now I'm going to add it to the bucket that I'm using today and I'm going to add some boiling water to sterilize it and mix it up and I'll show you how to get this started. So I don't need a ton. I'm only starting uh, the first succession of bulb onions today so I don't need a ton um, and just in case you're wondering today is February 21st and so bulbing onions are the first thing I really need to get going um, other than that I still have another week or two before I really have to do a lot of other things I also might do some echinacea seeds today so I already lost count <laughs> Oh, I to recount. <laughs> so I have nine cups of dry mix. Now I'm going to add the wet, which is the boiling water. And you want to do three parts dry mix to one part water. So I've got nine cups of dry mix. So I'm going to do three cups of hot water. That's your math for the day, kids. We're working in thirds here. So I'm going to hand this over to my daughter 
she's going to video me pouring in this hot water and stirring it up. All right, so the reason that I'm doing boiling water is because I'm sterilizing this mix from any uh, eggs that may be in here, viruses, bacteria. I think this is cup three right here. Mm -hmm. um, that might be in this mix from sitting over the winter. Um, if you're buying a pre-made uh, soil blocking or seed mixture, there's a better chance that you won't get little bugs, aphids. I mean, I've had gnats in the past, all kinds of weird things break out. It's just a good idea to sterilize it with some hot boiling water to make sure if anything's in there, it's getting killed um, so that you're not bringing that stuff into your house or into your soil and then, you know, having dampening off with your plants or anything like that. Now, since we're doing soil blocking with our little, uh, I think this is the three quarter inch soil blocker, we, we need this to be pretty wet because we want it to be nice and compact in here so that when we put it onto our tray, it'll actually stay in place and not fall apart. So I'm gonna let this kind of absorb the water that's in here. Also let it cool down because if I touch this right now, it's gonna be close to boiling hot. I might burn my hands. So this so. is pretty damp and what you're looking for is to get your hands in here and be able to squeeze it and it hold together. Squeeze and hold together. Um, and there is a little bit of water coming out, but it's not like dripping. So I feel like this is a good mix. If I get this in my soil block and I find that it's falling apart, I can always come back, add a little bit more water and redo it. So here we go. I'm going to kind of batch this all up over here in the corner because what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down, not on this, because that's going to push it out. I'm just pushing down and trying to get this loaded. Here we go. <laughs> Put my hand in here and get this loaded into these little blocks. And what I'll do is I'll push down onto the bottom. Can link him around? I'll push down into the bottom of the actual tray and that's what will help get that in there. And they're nice to have, they have these little scrapers kind of similar to what you use with sourdough to even this out. And I might actually end up getting one of those, but as you can see right now, I'm just using my hand. So it is a little bit dirty process um, to make sure that it's packed in there well. Okay, and then I'll get my tray. I'm gonna set this right here so I don't get it too dirty. You can come around here, Kenley. And then you'll grab your little thing and you'll put it to the edge, push down and release. And there is our first soil block. So let's do another one. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna put my hand through here like this. So I'm not pushing on this. And then I'll just push down and load up. Again, I'm pushing into the bottom of this tray to make sure that every little cell gets loaded. And then if I want, I can come back around and clean off the edges. Push it down, make sure that everything has dirt in it. This side feels a little. Okay, right next door, push down, release, and we'll do one more. Tray one done, awesome. I'm actually gonna move this over here. Okay, some other really handy tools for seed starting, no matter how you're doing it, whether you're doing soil blocking or uh, seed trays. Um, I got this again from the Gardener's Workshop. It's one of my favorite supply shops uh, for seeds and just information. I love Lisa Ziegler over there at Garden Workshop. But what this is, it's just a little aluminum pan, I guess you could call it. And when you put your seeds in it, what it does is it removes the um, electrical, <laughs> a static electricity. It helps reduce static electricity so that when you're trying to remove your seeds, uh, they don't stick to your hand or to whatever you're removing it from. So this little bitty tray, which costs like a dollar, um, helps remove that static electricity. And then, Kenley, if you'll come down here, you'll see that whenever you use these little soil blockings, there's already a little indentation that happens 
right in the center here. So I don't even have to use my dibber that I use whenever I'm doing um, seed trays. It already has the indention right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my little um, toothpick here. I'm gonna wet it in my mouth and then I'm just gonna to touch a little seed and see if it'll come out for me. If not, I'll just lick my finger and I'll get it out that way. There you go. Can you see that little seed on there? And I'm just gonna put it right in the middle. These are pretty small seeds. Um, I'm probably gonna do a couple per block like this. Actually, if I get them down here, that might work better. Okay, so we got a couple seeds there. And um, onions are a type of uh, vegetable that you can actually um, bulk plant where you've got multi-sow several seeds together. They can grow two, three bulbs at a time. So whenever these sprout, or germinate, I should say, if there's two to three German seeds that germinate, I will leave them together in this little cell, and then I can separate them out if there are more, and then just use those in a different plot. Can you stop playing with that, guys? Yeah. So I've got two there. This also helps to make sure that every cell gets at least one plant that germinates. Okay, so I'm just continuing to uh, wet my little Q-tip, I keep calling it a Q-tip, toothpick here and getting at least two, if not three seeds into each little depression. Depression, that was the word I was looking for earlier. Pretty simple using this tray, it really comes right off. And then what I'll do when I'm done with this, and I'll show you here in a second, is I'll just kind of cover that little depression with a little bit of soil. And then I'll take them inside and put them on my shelf uh, they don't need light till they germinate, so I don't have to turn any lights on until I start seeing little green tops come up. And I can cover this tray with some saran wrap if I want, but if you, that helps to hold the moisture in while your seeds are germinating, which can be really important. However, you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on those seed trays because if they germinate and you leave that saran wrap or plastic or uh, lid on, some people use the little domes uh, while their plants germinating, they can get too hot and die, and then there goes all your work that you've done. Okay, so I have all my seeds in, and we're gonna zoom in here if we need to so you can see what I'm gonna do. I'm basically just gonna depress these seeds into the soil. With I don't wanna disturb my little, um, my cube too much. I'm gonna use my finger so I can hold it in place. So I'm gonna press these down to make sure they're secure and have good soil contact like so. And while I'm doing that, I'm also kind of pressing the cubes together, keeping them from falling apart. Right, and then I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this. I mean, I don't really even need to do this for these really tiny seeds, but I'm just gonna do it anyway for good measure. And then what I'll do when it, is I'll keep my eye on the moisture level and I'll spritz the top of these until they germinate. Just spritz them with a water bottle until they germinate. Once they germinate, I'll just put a little bit of water in here where I can see the water around the edges of it. And if it's, it's all absorbed up, then I know that, um, that they got enough water. I don't wanna over water. I don't wanna leave it sitting in water. So if after I let them sit for five, 10 minutes, there's still water on the sides and I will tip it and get out that extra moisture because I don't want these falling apart. But that is pretty much it. If these seeds were bigger, I would cover them with a little bit more soil, but this is gonna be enough uh, for these seeds to germinate. They've got really good soil contact. Okay, so I've got a few more trays to finish um, and then I'll be done for the day. Now, you might be asking why soil block? Why? Well, the number one reason for me is I am done with having just totes and totes and bags and bags of cups and trays that I reuse every year uh, that just take up an entire shelf in my garage. I do have them all stacked, whether they're um, solo cups or styrofoam cups or cups I've reused from the nursery. I won't get rid of all of them. Probably, probably keep my really nice ones. Uh, but a lot of those things rip and tear. A lot of my trays have torn. Um, so a lot of it has just gone to waste. 
and it's just taping up a lot of space. So I am looking forward to opening up a lot of shelf and storage space for my seed starting supplies. The other thing is, look at this. I got 60 cubes, 60 basically plants on one little seven by 10 tray. And within that, I even have some that are multi-sown. So I could easily have a hundred plants in this little bitty tray, which is awesome. So that's gonna take up such a small amount of space on my shelving unit in my house. So if you're like me in the past, I've had shelving units all over the place or taking up my entire hallway. Well, this year I have one shelving unit with five levels and I probably won't even use all of it, but I'm gonna be doing a lot of succession sowing and succession planting, which is also gonna help keep the amount of plants that I have on that shelf down. So space saving when you're doing soil blocking is huge. The other thing that's a real bonus with soil blocking is root disturbance. These guys are gonna grow in these little cubes. When it comes time to transplant them out in the garden, I will have a root structure that's pretty much interplanted in these little cubes, and I'll just have to pull it off and plop it in the ground. So this really allows the roots to just grow in and out and through these cubes instead of feeling bound by the structure of a uh, planting plug. Some plants, they the minute they sense that they don't have anywhere else to go, they stop growing. But when you've got this sort of setup going, the roots feel like they can just keep expanding, which allows your plant to keep growing. Now, most of these spring plants that I'm starting, uh, like cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli and kale and all those things, they will only be in my house three to four weeks before I move them outside. So they can stay in these little small trays and I can plant them directly for, like this into the ground. Things that'll be in my house longer, like eggplants, possibly celery, um, those things will need the bigger, well, they'll start here and I'll transplant them into a two inch uh, tray, which has a little depression that I can just literally set this cube down into and I'll have videos showing how that works. But again, they'll have room to grow within that two inch uh, soil block without feeling limited by the walls of their cell. So if that makes sense, there's just lots of benefits for the health of the plant, for the space in your house, for organization purposes, and just how many plants you can get in such a small space. So I am really excited about this. I love that I got to make my own soil mix, which did not cost me a lot of money. And honestly, this little this little guy here was not very expensive at all. These trays are super cheap. So it's really not too much of a setup. You do not have to go get these really big bootstrap trays. I just wanted to try them out to see, especially when I get to my bigger plants. Now, but you can really do this quite cost efficiently and you don't have to save up all those uh, cell trays and cells over the years. You can, but I'm gonna try this just year, this year and see how it works. So I'm really excited. So thanks for coming along uh, with this soil blocking video and the first seeds planted of the season. I am excited to get this going. We are moving toward opening up our CSA and farm share here in the next few weeks uh, to those in the Berry County area to partake in all this awesome produce that we're producing out in our garden. So thanks for coming along. As always, my name is Landon Gilfell with Pepper and, Pine, Pepper and Pine Garden Design, Growing Gardeners and Their Gardens. And we'll see you in the next video.